Hello guys and welcome back to Foundation for Success. My name is Liz. I'm a student here at Thomas Nelson and I'm with Blair Durham from Hampton Roads Regional Black Chambers of Commerce. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thanks so much for the opportunity to talk with you today. I'm excited. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, ma'am. You and I have something in common. We are both go-getters in that when it's time to do something that we've never done before, we don't. <laughs> I know this is your first time doing a podcast. And when we set out to start Black Brand, it wasn't because we had a history of starting Black Chambers of Commerce. We just knew it was something that needed to be done. And we wanted to do it. Um, and we did it. Um, we got the organization underway as a 501c3 nonprofit in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and we were really founded around this concept of group economics and recognizing that so many challenges in the Black community. But if we were to hone in specifically on kind of the business community, um, we recognized that there was a need just to support Black-owned businesses and make sure that um, people know that these businesses exist on one hand, and then also to assist with development on the other hand. So making sure that our business community understands how to operate their businesses, how to grow their businesses, how to get funding for their businesses, how to scale, right? Um, and so that is... That's a little bit about why we did it and, and what it is that we do. How did you get started? Good question. Um, so our organization is almost a love story. Um, I have a background. So I um, studied at Virginia Tech. I got a BS degree in psychology and a BA in interdisciplinary studies. And with that interdisciplinary studies, I focused on sociology Black studies and women's studies. And that was where I really found kind of like my passion, you know. Not only was I um, learning those things in the classroom, but I also got involved with a lot of student activism on campus. And when I graduated, I wasn't too sure how I was going to utilize those skills, um, you know, specifically. But what I did was I just... I did some counseling and I did some teaching and I developed some sales skills and things like that for about eight to 10 years. Um, and then in 2014, I met my husband. And when I met him, he was very passionate, writing lots of poetry about social injustice. And I knew that we were going to need to do something you know, with this energy, right? So right after we got married, we started organizing people. We started um, meeting under the name Everyday Activism. We just started bringing different groups of people together to have conversations. And we were going to other people's events and we were watching documentaries. Um, and in the summer of 2016, we actually brought together a group and say, you know, the focus for this conversation is, is um, economic empowerment for the Black community, you know. Um, and we invited some people that we knew had an interest and we kind of put it out there to the general public via Facebook, of course. And um, we ended up having about 25 people to attend that event. And we made a couple of presentations, but I also kind of put forward what would be the strategic plan for Black brand. Um, one of the questions that people asked was, you know, what happened to the last Black Chamber of Commerce? You know, we used to have a Black Chamber of Commerce. What happened? And in doing some digging, we found out that the prior two chambers may not have been successful because the individuals that kind of operated the organization were already successful in other things that they were doing. So it didn't necessarily put the time and energy into really building it, you know. Um, and then the other thing was they were not necessarily able to help Black business owners get access to capital, 
right? Because I'll talk a little bit about why that's so important. Um, so we decided, okay, well, we'll launch Black Brand as a rebrand on this idea of a Black Chamber of Commerce, realizing that there might be a little negative energy around the prior two chambers. And so we give it a different kind of spin and, um, and start it up again. And yeah, that's how we did it. Um, hard work, you know, working together can be very hard work. There's a African proverb that we used to say all the time. It says, um, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So we had to balance that whole thing of like, we want to go, but we got to go together. So, you know, how do we, how do we make it work? You know? Um, and so that's what we did. So we, we went through all of the legal processes of getting our state corporation commission paperwork done, you know, articles and EIN, and, um, getting our 501c3 actually completed with the IRS. Um, we officially wore a black brand on September 22nd of 2016. We did a launch event as a gala, actually, the Black Diamond Affair that November. That was kind of like how we let the general public know um, that we existed. Wow. So a little, a little over four years will be the big five this year. <laughs> I really, really love that quote that you said. Um, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That is, in terms of teamwork and, you know, effort and just bringing people together, I, I just really like that a lot. Yes. You know, it is not easy going together. Um, but the learning and everything that comes with building a team, I mean, it really develops you, you know? You recognize that you have a skill set that I don't have. And rather than competing, we need to collaborate because we can get that much further when we do. So it's it's definitely been a blessing. Um, of course, you know, we've, we've lost a few people, we've gained some new people, we've grown considerably. Um, since we started and yeah, blessed every day to get to do this work. What is the biggest lesson or um, piece of advice you've learned along the way? Yeah, um, what I've learned along the way that has helped me more than anything is the lesson of not quitting, right? When you keep going, you can defy the odds, you know, simply by remaining committed to what you're doing. And I know that sounds really, really simple and easy, <laughs> but, woo, you know, sometimes that's the hardest thing you can do is just to take that next step and to um, remain committed to your vision, even when it doesn't look like it's going to materialize or when you had an epic failure, you know, um, but through really persevering and just kind of um, having our heads down. Like I said, you know, we, we've been able to grow. We went from just this tiny little cohort to now 175 business and corporate members. We've got like, you know, significant sponsorships. Last year, we, um, we actually built a grant program and we awarded over $300,000 to members of our business community. Who knew we would be doing that? It looks like we're going to have like a micro loan program that launches this year. We've got our own accelerator that, I mean, just all the different things. Um, so many great, 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 great connections that um, have really made this stuff possible that would not have been the case had we not had the courage to be brave and just just keep going. Sure, yeah. So tell me about uh, your partnership with Thomas Nelson. Your event. Yes. Oh my goodness. So I probably officially met the a wonderful Alicia Riley 
um, who does a number of events and things for Thomas Nelson um, about a year ago, right before the start of the pandemic. And she was kind of reaching out, wanting a partner. She had an event coming up and we start talking about some strategy and just, wow, you know, what are some ways we could work together? And of course the pandemic hit. Um, and later in my, uh, later last year, Thomas Nelson actually came aboard as a sponsor for one of our events. And part of that was that we would provide some speakers during Black History Month. And as it turned out, Black History Month became an opportunity for us to make good on some of the things that we started talking about earlier in 2020, right? Realizing, because, you know, when the pandemic first hit, we didn't know everything about virtual events, you know, virtual conferences, that kind of thing. We didn't know that they were going to become as well received, you know, as they have been. Couldn't really think through all of the different ways we could make them fun and exciting. But over the course of the year, I think we figured that out. So we're very excited about this Black History Month. Really, it's an extravaganza, as far as I can tell. It's a two-day event um, focused on empowering the Black family. Um, The national theme for Black History Month this year is uh, the Black family. And it's so strange because the event we were putting together for last May was focused on the Black family, right? Not even knowing that this year's theme was going to be so just like, oh my goodness, it worked out. Um, but there's something for everyone. I mean, there's a piece for children. You know, there's content for folks that may be in high school or college trying to understand adulting. There's content for people that might be interested in real estate. I mean, networking, just food and just all the, you know, all the things. One of the um, culminating events, um, actually the the finale for Saturday is about fear. Something that, you know, I was just kind of sharing with you, like continuing <laughs> doing it scared, right? Um, and the power that comes along with um, conquering that fear just by being active, right? So, Yeah, super excited about growing our relationship with Thomas Nelson and and doing things like this together. The event, I believe, is February 26th and 27th. Yep. February 26th, 27th. It's going to be streamed live from Thomas Nelson's homepage. It's also going to be streamed streamed live from Black Brand's homepage. Yeah, it's going to be great. Definitely tune in, bring your um, bring your family, tell your friends. It's going to be a nice, nice event. And Alicia does a fantastic job with um, seeing to it that all the details are just beautiful. Um, it's going to be great. And it's going to be inspiring and empowering, which is important for me. I'm like, okay, how can we educate? Like how much great information can we provide in, you know, an hour? <laughs> <laughs> so it's jam packed with with content and um definitely tune in. It's a free event. So you know we're excited. There's something for everyone to learn here. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the topics we're gonna talk about, um, which I think is really important to the black community is kind of understanding those unspoken politics associated with the corporate world. Often Oh my goodness. It's like, it's a hidden staircase, right? There's a, there's a ladder. There's a glass ceiling. There's all these things. You have no idea how you're going to really grow in your career. Um, and these are the things that you learn, you know, in school. Um, you know, in school, you get all the technical stuff, but you may not get the soft skills and you may not just get that, you know, Hey, this is how you navigate corporate America. So we have three professionals that are going to um, talk about, you know, getting to that quote unquote C-suite um, within corporate America. Um, I'm excited about that conversation. Also, as I mentioned before, kind of like the importance of networking, right? Um, being able to start that conversation with a complete stranger. This, this is who I am. Who are you? And how can I help you? You know, um, skills that everyone needs to learn. 
you know, it really doesn't matter what you plan on doing professionally, um, becoming, developing that voice to be able to talk to people and to be able to not just develop the relationship, but maintain it over time. Oh my goodness, you know, it just makes all the difference uh, personally and professionally. You know, when I think about my closest friends outside my family, they are my colleagues, hands down. Like, <laughs> I love the people that I work with. And it's because, you know, when we get together, you know, we're, you know, we're meeting for Zoom about work. We're going to spend 10, 15 minutes talking about family, talking about, you know, who we are and what we've been doing and, you know, um, kind of blurring the lines a little bit, <laughs> building authentic relationships, right? So that's, that'll be a good one. And then there's two, um, there's going to be a practical piece on budgeting, right? Some financial literacy concepts. There's so many apps now, there's no excuse for not being able to budget. But understanding why the budget is so important, you know, a lot of people are not able to account for the money that has passed through their hands, you know, yeah, 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 you know, I make, let's say I make a thousand dollars a month, you know, I work part time, I bring in a thousand dollars a month. Okay, so it's the end of the year, you know, where is it now? <laughs> and swiping that card at Starbucks and you know, find things online at Amazon. And the next thing you know, you don't have anything saved. You think about the pandemic and, you know, it's just like, wow, you know. Um, so we'll have some practical conversation around that as well. So it should be good. You know, it's funny that you say that because um, a lot of students, you know, my age, we don't, we don't understand the value of money and the importance of saving it. Like you said, we just kind of spend, spend, spend. We don't realize how valuable our time and our money is. So that'll be really- Adults really don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, like, that's why it was great content because, you know, whether you're Gen X, Y, or Z, you kind of need that reminder. I mean, let's be honest. Our culture pretty much encourages us to spend. To you know? spend. <laughs> I was on a talk earlier and the lady was sharing that we make four to six financial decisions every day. So we're, we're planning on buying something or we're actually buying something every single four to six times a day. I mean, think about that and it's like, wow. Um, and so you, it's not typically the thing where you can just like, all right, you know, I'm cutting it off from here. I'm done, but more or less, okay, let's look at where our money's going. And then let's create a plan, you know, for example, one of the things I love doing is eating out. I love eating out. But then when I thought about it, it was really that I love eating, period, right? In or out. And so throughout the pandemic, I have embraced cooking more. Um, and I figured out that by doing something like HelloFresh, I could always kind of be eating something different, right? And I could kind of have more time with my family because we're doing some of that cooking together. And so I'm able to check off several boxes, namely the budgeting box, because if it costs our family a hundred dollars to eat out with a family of five, we can get a whole box of food with four to five meals in it for a hundred, for a hundred dollars through HelloFresh, right? That's a pretty significant, you know? <laughs> so just, you know, just little tweaks like that, you know, those dollars add up. You know, imagine if I'm able to save two, $300 a month by using HelloFresh. What does that mean I can then do? I can probably build out my emergency fund, which most Americans don't have, right? Six months of income put to the side, just in case there's a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> or just in case I lose my job for any other reason, you know what I mean? Just in case, uh, we don't. We need to you know, focus on how we can build that nest egg. So that's a that'll be a good conversation too. And then also, I mentioned real estate before. Um, there's a lot of focus now on multiple streams of income. 
you know, so we go to college and we think, all right, I'm going to get my job. I'm going to have my you know, family and I'm going to be good. I'm going to retire, you know, and that's going to be enough. One of the things that Thomas Nelson students want to know about is, you know, how can I build another income stream? And real estate is a great way to do it. So we'll have a real estate investor on. And the beautiful thing about her is she also is a director at EVMS. So she's living this thing out. So she's like, Dr. So-and-so, I'm not going to give it away now at EVMS. But she's also a real estate investor because she's even at that level, she recognizes I got to have multiple streams of income. So what does it look like for me to take that savings and translate it into an apartment building that, or a duplex that I'm investing in or, you know, a property that I'm going to use for short term rentals like Airbnb um, or just a fix and flip, you know. Um, we'll talk a little bit probably about this really neat concept, wholesaling, right? Which is where with no money, you know, you basically negotiate a contract between a buyer and a seller. You're able to make some money. The seller is able to make some money. The buyer, you know what I mean? So it's like, wow. So we'll, we'll talk through some of those concepts too. Um, that have become very, very popular. I think the only thing we're not going to touch on it's cryptocurrency, which is really, really cool too. 56,000, the Bitcoin did 56,000. Can I just share a quick story? So <laughs> one of my friends texted me this weekend saying Bitcoin just reached 56,000, um, $56,000 per coin. Back in 20, what was that, 2015, when I first learned about Bitcoin, it was under $2,000 per coin five years ago. That exponential growth. So I said, you know what? I know we took most of our money out of our blockchain wallet, but let me just log in. Because even if we just had like one or two pennies sitting in there, that would be worth some money right now. Right? Right, yeah. Even if it was just a couple pennies in there. The does work, found my blockchain account, got them to send me the key, like all these things. Thinking, oh, why are you waking up to some points? I'd taken every penny out of there. Say that to say, Bitcoin is real. <laughs> like zero dollars and zero cents. I was like, oh, that thing stung so bad. But yeah, so there's there's so many different things. Um, and I'm not giving an endorsement or anything like that. I'm not a an advisor or a cryptocurrency specialist. Um, just talking about, you know, what's real. You know, everybody is being forced to consider cryptocurrency as a valid way of um valid means of exchange it's the future um yeah which is now right yeah absolutely another thing i heard you mention um is sort of the idea that people don't know what they don't know have you ever heard of that and that is so like you're talking to me right now and i'm just we're talking about things that i had never really thought about you know you really don't know what you don't know yeah and that can be intimidating Right, because it's like I don't know enough to I don't know enough to start a radio show and podcast. I don't know enough to you know. I mean, you could fill in that blank with anything and then literally not do it. <laughs> um, but it's so true. We 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 don't know. What we don't know, and so sometimes opening up, you know, a thing is really like opening Pandora's box, like. You know, um, I'll give another quick example. Um, when we first got started, we thought we wanted to have a business institute, right? And basically, you know, we were going to formalize this process for people to take classes. 
as we got going, we realized what the market is doing. You know, online classes, everything's on demand, you know, teachable.com, da 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 on one hand, and realizing that people tend to pay very little for those kinds of courses um, in some instances. But we also realized that the trending concept is around incubators and accelerators, right? So we felt like, okay, how can we take the fundaments of our business institute and translate them into what the market's actually asking for. Um, that was an unknown to us. You know, when we started, we had no idea that that was what we would be doing. But literally, by starting and then continuing, we were able to learn, we were able to adapt. And as a result, we were able to get the financial support that we were looking for to. Um, to get it off the ground. So it's okay, I say that to say, it's okay not to know everything out the gate because you can't, you can't. And then the other thing I think about is, you know, for some reason, the know-it-alls aren't doing it. Why didn't they do it yet? The people that knew how to do the thing that I've been trying to do, <laughs> busting my tail to learn how to do, they didn't do it. So maybe I'm supposed to learn it Maybe I'm supposed to do it, and that's okay too, you know? Thank you so much for coming <laughs> today. Yeah, that is going back to uh, the idea of not knowing what you're doing and then just proceeding on, anyways. It's... I mean, you're probably going to get thrown in the bus a little bit. You know, <laughs> not everybody's going to be happy for you. That's a thing, too, is that um, you may not get support from the people that you think should be supporting you in any endeavor, you know. That's okay, because they know you don't know. Parents, friends you grew up with, they're like, what are you doing, dude? You have no idea how to do this. But again, you keep going and then they're like, oh, wow, you figured it out. <laughs> Not caring and, about what other people have to say. Yeah. Know, kind of going on. And developing that that thick rhinoceros skin too. Um, because rejection is a real thing, you know. Initially, it's going to hurt like heck. Um, but you toughen up, say, no, 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 I'm good. You know, and keep going. You have definitely inspired me to do some things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm just going to... Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Yay. I'm glad to hear that. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome so much. I really appreciate the time and getting to share. So tell us one more time about your event. Yes. So excited to uh, partner with Thomas Nelson Community College for a Black History Month event uh, focused on the Black family. It's actually called Family Matters. Um, and it is in partnership with Black Brand. And it's February 26th and 27th. It'll be live on the Thomas Nelson homepage as well as Black Brand's homepage. Thank you so much for tuning in on Foundations for Success. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>